This is the Earth. It's really, really big. It has a total circumference of 40,000 kilometers at the equator, and a surface area of 510 million kilometers squared. And the vast majority of petroleum is found underground. So how on Earth do we find it in order to extract it? Geologists can use a variety of different methods to locate oil even when it resides deep beneath the Earth's surface. The most common method of locating oil is via seismic survey. Essentially, geologists use a variety of different tools to emit sound waves, which then delve into the Earth's crust, some of which bounce back to the surface. A computer can then interpret these sound waves and create a detailed three-dimensional image of the various geological formations beneath the surface, thus providing the approximate location and amount of oil in any given oil reservoir. If the oil is worth extracting, we then go on to the next stage of the petroleum industry, drilling. Before the oil can be extracted from the reservoir, a well must first be drilled. This well is created during the second stage of the petroleum industry, drilling. In order to carry out drilling operations, a temporary drilling rig is constructed. The large derrick allows for a pulley system that can support a long drill pipe attached to the drill bit. A turntable turns the kelly, which is attached to the drill pipe, to allow the drill bit to drill. As the drill bit plunges deep underground, drilling fluid is pumped down through the drill pipe to wash the rock cuttings out. The resulting mud returns to the surface and passes through a shale shaker, which removes any unwanted solids from the mud. The mud is then poured into a tank, where it is then used as drilling fluid to remove further rock cuttings. Once the well has been drilled to sufficient depth, the walls are reinforced with concrete and steel casing, and then the drilling rig is deconstructed. The next stage of the petroleum industry is production. In this stage, the oil is extracted from the reservoir. This is done with an oil rig. The rig's size and shape depend on where the oil reservoir is located. In this case, a pump jack is used. A motor turns two crank rods aided by counterweights, which are attached to a pitman arm, which is in turn attached to one end of what is known as the walking beam. The beam is centered on a pivotal point, and the circular momentum of the crank rods force it to rotate back and forth as it is pulled upon by the pitman arm. Attached to the opposite end of the beam is the horse's head, and attached to that is the bridle. As the head travels up and down with the movement of the walking beam, it pulls on the bridle, which is attached to a polished rod. The rod is attached to another rod known as the sucker rod, which extends all the way down into the oil reservoir. At the end of the sucker rod are two valves, the traveling valve and the standing valve. These valves pump the oil up out of the ground as they move up and down with the momentum of the sucker rod. Once the oil is drawn to the surface, it then travels along a small pipeline to a collection plant. This is the end of the third stage of the petroleum industry. From the collection plant, the oil must be transported to a refinery. The fourth stage of the petroleum industry is transportation. In this stage, the petroleum is transported from the production site. This can be done in several ways, by road, rail, sea, or pipeline. Pipelines can be thousands of meters long and are typically made from steel with an average diameter of anywhere between 10 to 120 centimeters. The oil is kept in a constant motion by regular pump stations along the pipeline and flows on average at speeds of up to 6 meters a second. The oil's final destination is the refinery, where the last stage of the petroleum industry takes place.
the last stage of the petroleum industry is refining. Petroleum essentially is useless in its natural state. What's valuable and useful are the various components that make it up. These components all have different molecular weights and therefore have different boiling points. Petroleum companies take advantage of these different boiling points and use them in order to separate the different components. In order to do this, the petroleum is first heated to temperatures as high as 600 degrees Celsius by pumping it through a furnace. The resulting petroleum gas is then piped into what is known as a fractioning tower or distillation column. As the gas rises up through the tower, different components condense at different heights. A series of bubble caps then prevent the oil from falling down once it condenses. The petroleum is then pumped out through pipes for further refining, such as the removal of sulfur in desulfurization units. Sometimes the heavier elements of petroleum are broken down into lighter, more useful components, using a coker or hydrocracker. The major products resulting from petroleum refining are liquid petroleum gas, gasoline, naphtha, kerosene, diesel fuels, fuel oils, lubricating oils, paraffin wax, bitumen, and petroleum coke. These products are then used in our everyday lives, such as powering our cars. Petroleum is a non-renewable resource, and so it will not last forever. It is estimated that the Earth's oil supplies will finally run dry towards the end of the century. When that time comes, mankind will be forced to resort to a new source of energy, such as solar or geothermal. But for now at least, petroleum is essentially what makes the human world go round. <laughs>